Well, hi everybody and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans and I am your weight loss coach, health strategist and internationally published author, helping take your life, your business, your mindset, your body from where it is that you are right now to being unstoppable. Today I want to focus on one particular topic. This is really, really so important. And I'm calling it suicide versus opportunity. Right now in my country, in Australia, particularly in my home state of Victoria, we're going through a really tough time with this pandemic. And even though our numbers are nothing compared to other parts of the world, right now we are in one of the toughest lockdowns in the world because of what they're trying to do to stop the growth of the pandemic. Now, some good news is that just today, our numbers have reduced from, if we go back even three or four weeks, we were up around 700, close to 800 uh, new people uh, getting the the virus a day. Now, keep in mind, the whole Australian population is about 27 million of the whole of Australia. I think there's about 5 million in Victoria. So nothing compared to... Like Spain, yesterday they had 3,700 in one day. But we're talking about something that was under control, getting out of control quite quickly, and we went from zero cases up to 800 uh, pretty quickly. And uh, so for the first time in five weeks, today we're down into a number with a one in front of it, so 179, uh, still nine deaths, uh, and we've had the most deaths in the country in uh, my state here. Now, what we are living in right now, if you've listened to the the last few uh, podcasts that I've done, you will have heard me talk about some of this. But uh, just to put this into context, uh, we have a curfew. So we are not allowed outside between the hours of 5 a.m. and 8 p.m. So we're not allowed out before then or after 8 p.m. out of our homes unless you have a permit to uh, do your work and and that kind of thing, emergency services work and et cetera. Uh, We are only allowed to do one hour of exercise, up to one hour of exercise outside a day. Masks are compulsory uh, whenever you're outside your home and you're allowed to go to the shop to do food shopping once a day. Uh, All the retail shops here are closed and uh, most of the industry is shut down, construction is, is still going, and obviously the emergency services stuff is still going as well. Everything else is, is completely shut down. The fines for not complying, it's $200 if you call without a mask. If you are supposed to be in lockdown from, if you've had a, a COVID test and you're either waiting for the results and you've got symptoms or you have tested positive, then you have to stay in home for uh, two weeks and there are checks from the police and army at various times of the day and the week to make sure that you're there and if you're not there then there's a fine of up to uh, $1,600 and it can be up to as far as I think $20,000 if they want to take you to court for depending on the seriousness of the breach if they can't contact you. So this is a really really tough time. So the impact is also this. So people that are perhaps working in offices are now being forced to work at home. Now, a lot of people have been doing that for some time, but say like for instance, I've got a number of accounting clients and they've still been able to say split their workforce. So they might have half the workforce working in the office and the other half working at home and then they swap over. So if somebody in one half comes down sick, then they obviously all have to uh, stay at home and um, isolate. And the, that means that the other side can come in. I'm just going to have a sip of water. And now they are not allowed to go to work. So they all have to stay at home. So what we have now is a situation where more people are at home working from home together. So you've now also got partners spending a lot more time together. You've got the homeschooling going on. You've got those people that live by themselves and are isolated and 
all of the issues that this conjures up for people, and you, you know where I'm heading with this. So we've also had a, a dramatic spike in the number of calls that go to our mental health lines here, whether it be we've got ones called Lifeline, we've got Beyond Blue, I think there's a series of other ones as well. There's Kids Helplines, etc. And there's been, I believe, a 30% spike in those calls. Since uh, the second lockdown, I'm going to get this number wrong, but there's been a dramatic impact, so I won't say it because I, I can't confirm it. Um, the, there's been a dramatic impact in the amount of domestic violence since the second lockdown in Victoria. Uh, the, um, the number of suicides. Now, I don't know where you find this number, but uh, again, I, so I won't quote a number, but it's a number that they don't really talk about a lot, but the number of suicides, there have been more people that have died from suicide since COVID started than there have been through the actual pandemic itself in Australia, and particularly in Victoria because of what's going on right now. Like it's serious, serious stuff. And some people, I'm speaking to uh, more people all the time. I'm reaching out to people deliberately, like I've just gotten, um, I've just put down the phone actually from calling, let me see how many it was, I'll tell you. Uh, well, I started here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I've called 18 people and then they've, uh, some I haven't been able to get hold of, some of them have been calling me back. So 18 people just non-stop, back to back, back to back, because I genuinely care about people. I want to make sure that they know that I'm there and me as their coach reminding them of the things that they need to be doing to at this time to be taking care of themselves. And that is about getting your 10,000 steps in a day, making sure that you're getting out for your one hour of exercise so you can get some sunlight on your face and just get away from the four walls and away from a computer screen because we're spending so much time in front of that, that flat screen. Um, making sure that you're nurturing your body with the right foods, drinking plenty of water, doing your strength training exercises and everything, and just telling them the plans that we've put in place to help support them uh, through this process. And everybody's been really appreciative. And actually somebody just before recording now, uh, one of my old clients uh, that I contacted reached back to me and said, look, we just wanted to see how you're going, uh, which is nice because often, I mean, I do it to see how other people are going. It's not often that people come back and say, well, but how are you going? Um, so that was nice, uh, a nice experience. So what this brings me to is the fact that why are we in this situation where we have so many people committing suicide? I don't know whether you can hear that in the background, but there's a hailstorm right now. Um, and I've gone, I'm in a room that has a tin roof, so apologies if you can hear that. I like a good storm. Um, uh, yet why are we in this situation, in this day and age, that we have so many suicides? And I called this, this topic today, suicide versus opportunity. Why do we have a situation where we don't have the people at the highest level of our government talking daily about what the suicide rate is? Is there evidence to show that, I'd love to ask Dr. Phil this, is there evidence to show that if we talk about suicide, more people will commit suicide? Is that the risk, that we make it such a risk uh, such a, a high profile thing that, well, if we talk about it more, more people are bound to do it, so maybe we should just not talk about it. I don't know, I don't know that that's the answer. I mean, we have a thing here called the stolen generation where Aboriginal babies were taken from their mothers because they didn't believe that they, the mothers could uh, look after the kids and they never really talked about it. They just took the babies away from them and it wasn't until many decades later that the Prime Minister apologised for that behaviour um, I, I don't know the science behind not talking about it, but I think it's something that we do need to talk about because until we get it spoken about at the highest level, then how do we know that we're really going about addressing it the right way? So today, I wanted to talk about six things that I believe that if we get people to focus more on these things, then they'll be thinking more about the right side of this conversation, and that is the opportunity as opposed to the suicide. Because you can have the same situation 
and have two people look at it completely different. For instance, obviously COVID has brought a lot of things to the surface for people. It means that livelihoods have been impacted. It means some households' incomes have been dramatically impacted. <clears throat> Pardon me. Some incomes may have been taken away completely. People have lost hours. They've been cut back. Uh, you are now spending more time with a partner than you have before. And let's face it, as humans, we weren't programmed to communicate very well in our brain. So we don't necessarily know how to, especially men, communicate our feelings properly. And often that can come out as anger and frustration. And that's what leads to uh, more unhappiness and more instability in the home. And then that flows down to the kids and the domestic violence and the family violence and all that kind of stuff. It's horrible. It's horrible stuff. So we really need to address it. So you've got two people, same situation. One person says, because of everything that I'm going through with this right now, I want to kill myself. Another person comes along, like myself, for instance. So I'm a single income household raising two kids. And uh, yes, I share the um, custody with their, their mum, but I have the kids most of the time. Uh, my business has been dramatically cut back. There's no, um, no sight of an end to this. And what I see is opportunity and excitement for that. And look at all the things that I can do. Same situation. Now, why does one person want to kill himself, but I'm excited and look at all, for all the opportunity? So this comes to my first point. You need to change the questions that you ask yourself. Because if you are sitting there saying to yourself, why is this happening to me? Why do we have no money? Why do we always fight? Why... Am I angry? Why this? Why that? You'll find an answer to it. But if you ask yourself a better question, <clears throat> then you'll get a better quality answer. And that is rather than ask yourself those questions, you could do like what I do and say, what can I learn from this? What is the opportunity for me right now in this really hard time for me to step up and take myself to the next level so that I can be a better coach, I can be a better person for me first, but then be a better coach, a better dad, a better friend, a better lover, a better partner, a better, um, you know, whatever. Just better all round. Because we've all got that opportunity, it's just that we don't look at it all the same way. We don't take it that way. And if we started to do this more, then I think the, que the, like the outcomes from those questions will be so different. Because I, I'm not sitting here thinking, how do I kill myself? And that's not to make light of people that are, have a mental health issue and are really struggling. What I'm saying is that let's get people to ask themselves better quality questions because you'll get better outcomes. Now, number two is, now I've heard a number of experts in this area uh, talk about in terms of mental health and suicide talk about this the difference between say somebody that's um, uh, wants to commit suicide and somebody that sees the opportunity and is uh, and is you know really going for it is goals the person that wants to commit suicide doesn't have any goals so they think the best thing for me to do is just to end this and then it all ends then i don't have to do anything but again, this comes down to those questions again, doesn't it? The, all of the things I'm talking about here are linked. It's like links in a chain. If you've got some goals, you're starting to ask yourself some questions. What do I really want to achieve? What's my life's purpose? I know that's a hard question for a lot of people. And I was unsure for many years as to what I wanted to achieve until I was 40 years old. And then I knew with clarity what it was that I exactly wanted to achieve. But... You need to set some mini goals for yourself. And that could be, I want to get up 10,000 steps today. Or if you're currently only doing 2,000 steps a day and you're very overweight, say, and you have no energy, then why don't we go from 2,000 to 2,500? 
and then maybe the next day, maybe see if you can do that again. And then maybe the day after that, see if you can get to 3,000. Or maybe it's 4,000. And then before you know it, you're just chipping away and that 10,000 is, oh wow, look at that, I've done 15,000 steps today. Wow, look at me go. It's about setting those tiny, tiny goals for you. For some people that I've worked with before, their goal is to get out of bed. And that's not because they have a physical injury, it's because in their mind, they don't see any point in getting out of bed or getting out of their bedroom. I've worked with teenagers before that have stayed in their room all day and just eaten a loaf of bread. It's like you've got to set these tiny goals for yourself before you work up to that big goal. Now, I know for a lot of you listening to this right now, you are successful entrepreneurs, successful business owners, but I'm sure you have someone in your life that you can think of that is maybe going through these struggles. Or maybe there's part of you that says, do you know what? Yeah, I really don't ask myself high quality questions all the time. I don't look for the good in every situation. Maybe you do, but maybe there's room for improvement there. The third point, again, the next link in the chain, passion. Anyone that wants to commit suicide has no passion about, or they're not focusing on the passion that they have in their life. I'm sure if we took any person that's about to commit suicide and we we spent time with them to understand what's going on in their life and why do they really feel like that, that we would be able to uncover and tap into something that they're really passionate about. And then it's about directing the energy towards that. I think passion's one of those words that we don't talk enough about. We don't become passionate enough in our life. And this was one of the goals that I set myself about six or seven years ago. I said, I want to be more passionate. I said, the work that I do is very important work. I said, I'm, I'm a passionate person, but I didn't feel like I was expressing my passion in a way that conveyed what was going on inside me. So that was a big shift for me. I had to step out of my comfort zone to show people in like the way that I'm talking with you now, I'm very passionate about this. I'm worked up. I can feel the blood pumping through my body. I can feel um, you know, the fibers in my body firing because I'm so excited about uh, talking about this. It's a passionate subject for me. Anything to do with health and wellness is, is a, a really passionate topic of mine. So we need to get people to focus in on their passion. And then that links to number four, which is focus. We need to get people to focus. The person that wants to commit suicide or is, is so depressed all the time is not focusing on the right things. They're focused. They're focused on being depressed. And here's the, here's the thing. We all know what a depressed person looks like. We can describe them in detail. Like if I said to you, describe what it would be to see a depressed person, you'd be able to say what they look like. Their head down, I'm talking shallow, shallowly, breathing shallowly, um, talking quietly, I mean. Um, shoulders forward, you know, not... Um, and you're not sitting upright, chest out, head up, eyes forward, smile on the face. Uh, you know, there's a big difference. And the, the, the person that's uh, depressed is focusing on those things that they believe make them feel better, but they're actually making them feel worse. So we've got to help them focus on those things that are going to work for them. And it's focusing on the goals. It's focusing on those goals that they're passionate about. And it's asking themselves better questions as to what is it that I want to achieve over this next week? What is something that I can aim for? How can I make a difference to other people's lives? How can I take how I'm feeling and help other people learn from it? Because I can tell you right now, my book, Awaken the Sexy Within, that came from a very, very painful past. And that came from, like me talking to you right now, came from pain in the past. And because I've been at a point when I was a child that I didn't want to be here anymore. I know what this is like. But then when I started asking myself better quality questions, it made my whole world change. So I think I said uh, a couple of days ago 
uh, one of my big problems was the negative self-talk that I had. And I kept asking my, or saying to myself, why does, why does no one like me? Why am, I too, why am I short? Why am I ugly? Why do I have a small body? Why am I not smart? Why do I not have any friends? Why am I so unhappy? All good questions, eh? Hey? But they're disempowering questions because I, um, I easily came up with answers to all of those with one, one sort of catchphrase, because you're a loser. And it wasn't until I changed my mindset to say, you're a winner, that things started to change. And I realized that I could do anything, I could be with anyone that I wanted to be, it all came from within me. And I just asked myself different questions. Point five is about aspiration. We need people to aspire to be something greater than they are. Something much greater than you think perhaps you're capable of being. Because when we aspire for something great, it pushes us. It engages a different part of our mind and our soul and this is the problem right now where people are focusing on the detail of how many people are going to get the, the virus today. When's it going to be down into single figures? When is it going to open up again? When can I go back to the pub? When can I go to the movies? When can I go on holidays? As opposed to how can I create a better person in me right now? How can I help others in this tough time feel better about themselves? What can I do? I've got more time now than I've ever had before. It's time for me to say, what's that big, big goal that I want to go for? How do I get to be in that top 1% of success in the world? How do I do that? Because anyone that has a big aspirational goal like that, they're nowhere near the downside of mental health. They're like so focused, so energized, they have purpose every single day. They're asking themselves the best quality questions. They've got distinct goals that they're passionate about and they're focused on and they're aspired to get there. And then the last one, number six, is about taking action. Because you can think all, you can ask yourself great questions and you can aspire to be the first person on Mars. But unless you do something about it and take massive action, how are you ever going to get there? And the answer is you won't. And it'll just become a great idea or something that you read in a book somewhere and you never actually do anything about it. Now this is again uh, the purpose with my book, Awaken the Sexy Within. It's a working book so that it doesn't become shelf help. It becomes self-help. So after you read each step, you've got to perform a task. And yeah, you can skip through those steps, but do you think you're gonna get the outcomes? No, I mean, it's got 43 steps in there, guaranteed blueprint to success. But if you don't do the work, you will not get the outcome. And you can't say, oh yeah, I don't need to do that. And I tell you where it gets challenging in, in my book, from the very first action step. And I'll tell you what that is. And I, I'm, I'll give you an insight into it. I get people to, I'm standing in front of a mirror right now, but I'm not gonna do this step. I get people to stand in front of a mirror and remove all their clothes and examine in detail from head to toe, front on, side on, back, look at all the, the wrinkles, the lumps, the bumps that you, you like, you don't like, and then write down what you like, what you don't like, why you would change it. Um, there's a series of questions after that. Now, that's very confronting for people. Now, when I'm coaching people around this step, I find that many people don't do this step. Or they'll do it, but they won't write it down. And I'll say, so did you do it? And they say, yeah. I say, how did you feel? And I say, oh yeah, not very good. And I said, well, tell me what you wrote down. And they'll tell me a few things and I can tell they haven't written it down. And I said, oh, did you write that down? I said, no. I said, why didn't you write it down? So, oh, not really sure. I said, I'll tell you why you didn't write it down. 
because you were scared of it. And the reality is that people that do this are normally, say, overweight or unhappy with their body for their whole life. They've been, been at this stage. Now, the idea of this very first step is to get people to do things that they have never done before, to get people to look at things in a way that they've never looked at before. Because if we want to get change, guess what? We need to do things differently. And that's why I get people to do that. It's, it can be painful. And normally, when I then ask a series of other questions, uh, it's not too far into that when they start to cry because we're really tapping into that deep emotional part as to why they feel that way. And this is why they stay where they are because they're not properly addressing the pain points, not really digging into those. And you say, well, what's the point of that? That's cruel. No, this is about creating energy for change. And when people get to those painful points and we examine that in a bit of detail, we can really uncover why people are the way that they are. And often it dates back to something that's happened in their childhood, uh, whether it's, uh, it could be a whole range of different things. Uh, from um, uh, the way that they relate food to behaviour, um, things that have happened with their parents, uh, the way they've been parented, um, the way that they've been bullied, the, something that a boyfriend or girlfriend has said to them about their weight at a certain sensitive age when they were growing up and that's always stuck with them and they've carried it forward through their relationships and they just think that, well, I'm just big boned, I'm this, I'm that, uh, but that's all head trash. So... We cut through that by getting people to take off their clothes. You can't hide. You can suck it in, but you, you can't hide. And the idea is to be 100% honest with yourself. So the people that skip that point, it's the very first one in the book. It's like if you're not going to do the first point, what are the chances of you doing the, 40, the 43rd one or the 37th one or the 26th one? Uh, if you're going to skip the first one, chances are you're going to skip others. And like, how dare you skip the first one? Like, are you better than that step? Is that, oh, it's not really relevant to me because of, well, no, it's relevant to you. You need to do it. Um, you, some people might do it easier than others, but, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is part of life. You've got to look at yourself naked every day and you can choose to just ignore it and cover yourself up quickly and not truly address it. Or you can say, do you know what? I'm reaching that time in my life where I want change. I want that sexy, hot body that everyone wants to put their hands all over. That sounds really wrong, but you know what I mean. Um, where people desire you, crave you, because you exude health, you exude the body that you want. Now that doesn't, I'm aiming for a six pack, uh, that doesn't mean you have to have a six pack. Uh, it's whatever you want, okay? But don't, you know, don't lie to yourself. So um, that whole point is about action, making sure that you take the action. You wanna get a result, you must take action and you've gotta make a big action and you've gotta consistently take the action. Otherwise, you will just continue to disappoint yourself. So really important topic, I think those six links in the chain, and I say links because they are all connected, you start nailing those things and you watch how your life starts to change. Now what you're doing is rather than focusing on that left downside of the conversation, you're focusing on the right side, the opportunity, the growth, the excitement, how life is about to change for you and completely erupt into this amazing thing that you don't even know what it looks like yet. And here's the other thing. A lot of people want to know what the outcome is going to be, but life isn't like that. And that's what also makes life exciting. Because if you were born and you had a, a book for every day of what you were going to do, how boring would that be? Oh, what am I up to today? Oh, let's look at chapter 35. Here we go. Oh, right. So I'm going to have a car accident today. Um, the kids are going to lose their jumper at school and I'm going to hurt myself in the gym. Oh, fantastic. Um, can't we just skip to the next day? It doesn't matter what happens. Uh, you know, what you do, that life is going to play, like your day is going to play out that way. 
I mean, how boring would that be? You'd know exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. Um, that's not how we're supposed to live. We want to live like we don't know what's going to happen. And that's what makes it exciting for us to get up each day and keep working hard and keep reaching towards our, our goals and aspiring to be greater versions of ourselves so that we can help other people and we can pass on the skills that we have to our children and just enjoy the experience of life. If you want to work with me more closely, you can. You can go to the mental toughness and body show.com. Scroll to the bottom, click on the link, and you can opt in for a free consultation with me personally. And I would love to connect with you and just have a conversation and see how we can work together. Have a great day wherever you are. I'll see you tomorrow.